Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and one of my favorite corals in this hobby are zoanthids and palethoas. They are beautiful, amazing corals. But if there's one of those species that's been the bane of my existence, it's these stupid little teal pallies. They go in and they take over. Honestly, if they weren't so invasive, I'd want them in the tank. But they really will grow in and take over everything. So the pallies we're getting rid of today, I spent probably the better part of a year trying to manually pull out with tweezers. And I'd make good progress and they would just grow back. So today, we're taking extreme measures. We're gonna get the saw out and we're cutting them off the rock. It may seem like a scorched earth policy, and it kind of is. We're gonna kill some good coral to get rid of some bad coral. So here's the problem. I've got teal pallies invading all of these zoas. I mean, it's at the point I've tried pulling them. They keep expanding. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these guys off the rock. It's extreme. I'm gonna lose a, a huge amount of area and I'm gonna lose a bunch of these just super awesome fire and ice zoas. I don't care. These teal pallies, they're a nuisance. They're gonna take over my tank. Extreme times call for extreme measures. So I'm down here in the furnace room. You can see the big frag tanks behind me and I'm getting ready to cut those coral. I'm gonna end up using an old tile saw as my primary cutting method to do this. It kinda is what it is, it's what I've got. It's actually a pretty good way to go. So we're cutting pallies, I'm gonna PPE up. I'm using a, like a painting respirator. I have this around, it's great. We've got carbon cartridges on here. I'm not gonna inhale any pally toxins. That's important to me. I've been hit by pally toxins. I got full length gloves. Overkill, absolutely. I've been hit by pally toxins. I've got glasses. I wish I had goggles, but I don't. So we're gonna be careful. The reality is, pally toxins can make you sick. Take care of your safety. So I'm using a respirator and I got a loud saw. You won't hear crap, but we're gonna try to get as much off as we can. So here's the big rock. Basically, pallies are taking over this entire section. So the goal is to remove all of the zoas and pallies in this section. I think these are pallies as well, so I'm gonna try to get those. Um, this may be a two or three step method, because I don't wanna take too much coral, right? I wanna save as much of this rock as I can, but this section here is infested with pallies. It has to go. are back in the tank they actually look pretty darn good now there's gonna be risks of pally toxins leaching into this tank first thing I'm gonna do is a water change yeah that's the reason the tank looked like crap at the beginning you do the water change after you make the big improvements
After the water change, I'm throwing a media bag full of carbon in the tank. The goal is to pull out any palytoxins. Carbon's great, it'll keep chemicals out of my water, but here we're really looking for palytoxins. I've rinsed the carbon, just a standard media bag, and I'm tossing it in the rear chamber. And here's the tank immediately after the water change. It's looking pretty rough, but that's not unexpected. We just did some major surgery and a clean. So you can see this whole area where the pallies were is cut off. It looks ugly. But now we have bare rock. I'm expecting dino I'm, to kind of colonize this area. I'm struggling with dino in this tank anyway, so that has nothing to do with that. But whenever you, whenever you have bare rock exposed, algaes and dino and all kinds of fun stuff are going to try to colonize that first. Good thing is zoas are quick to grow over that kind of stuff. So we've got zoas here that can grow over it but I might pick some new fun ones to put there. What would you guys like to see there? I like cheap fun zoas. I'm not into the high-end collector stuff. It's been about a week since I fragged those two pallies. As you can see, I missed a bunch. So I'm gonna pull this rock again and cut some more. The goal last time was to leave as much of the coral I wanted there. Obviously, I gotta cut more. Not gonna bother filming it. You guys got the gist of it. All right, lights aren't on yet, but I can see I miss some more pallies. They're down kind of in these deep ridges, which is why I'm having a hard time getting them. So I'm gonna pull the rock again and cut more rock away. And here it is the next day after the second cutting, and I believe I finally got all the pallies off. The rock kind of looks like crap, but really, I don't care. The goal is to get zoas growing all over it. When it's done, we won't see that anyways. And there we go. I think I've cleared the teal pallies from that rock. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if more pop up somewhere. It really doesn't take much of a piece of pally there for it to regrow. Plus, there are a few in the tank on little islands that I still have to attack. Now, on to the health and safety part of dealing with pallies. You saw me, I was using full length gloves, a respirator, and I would prefer goggles. I had glasses. It's really a big deal. Since I started filming this video, there has been a report of somebody actually potentially dying from palytoxin poisoning while working on their aquarium. This is really sad, and I have the article linked down below from Reef Builders. So, it's not confirmed yet that this person actually died from palytoxins, but it is something that you need to be really aware of if you're gonna work with this species of coral. So really it's any zoanthid or palythoa that produce these palytoxins. For legal reasons, I am not gonna tell you how to do it because I don't want somebody coming back on me saying, Scott said to do this, I did it and I got sick. That's not the case. What I'm telling you is what I did. The goal is to cover your skin. So I wear full length gloves. The ones I wear are actually made for inseminating a cow. Pick them up at a local farm store. They work great for this purpose. The goal is to keep any water from getting on my skin. I use a real respirator. This is one, a respirator I used back when I was taking auto body. It's for painting cars. It's got the carbon cartridges, all of that. It does a really great job keeping any sort of mist or anything out of it like that. I've cut hundreds, if not thousands of colonies of zoanthids and palythoas over the years using this method, and I've never personally had a problem. And then of course, glasses, goggles, the palytoxins can get in through your skin, if you have any sort of cuts or anything like that, your eyes, your mouth. So any of that you really wanna cover and be careful with. Now. Death from palytoxins is incredibly unusual, but I myself had been sickened by it. Many years ago when I was working in this tank, I was cutting pallies and mushrooms off the rock. And while I was doing it, my arm hit my rose bubble tip anemone and it just kind of sat there and it burned me over time. And of course I'm sitting there cutting away and that is how I believe I got poisoned by the palytoxin is through the burn on that rose bubble tip anemone. That's why I wear the full length glove. It's a less about, it's, it's all about keeping water away from my skin while working with these corals.
So be safe out there and be careful. These corals are really cool, really fun, and really easy to work with as long as you take the proper precautions. So, palithoas and zoanthids are corals I absolutely love. The downside to them is they can grow out of control, so if you're worried about that, put them on an island. Don't put them on your base rock. And when you're cutting them, PPE up, but really, they're one of my faves, and I wouldn't want a reef tank without them. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.